handle with their hands the living Word of God, Jesus Christ, the incarnate Word of God in the flesh. And 12 of them said, I'd like to understand. Christian, I want to tell you something. Jesus has never been, uh, the majority has never gone for Jesus. Many, many believe in Him. But it's never been a majority. And that has nothing to do with whether or not He's the way, the truth, and the life. You know what's scary to me? And what ought to make us sit up this morning and take notice is that there are very few that have ears to hear. And I want to say to you this morning that there are very few who have ears to hear. And I think that you ought to very seriously consider committing and saying to God, God, let me be one of the few. God, I want to hear. I want to know truth. So let's begin with that as we get into our text. He says in his answer, he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Now, do they understand it? No. Jesus said, it is your gift or it is given to you to understand the mystery of the kingdom of God. Did he leave it at that? No, because they still didn't understand. And so that's why I say to you that a parable obscured truth. It hid truth. But not for those that wanted to hear. Those that wanted to hear will come and say, hey, I want to hear. I, want, I don't understand this. But he says this, but unto them that are without, means outsiders. Literally what this means is people that are on their way to hell. Them that are without, the Bible says, all these things are done in parables. And what it means is you're not gonna, they're not going to get any of it. It's not for them. Hey, don't try to teach Bible truth, Bible morality, Bible standards to the lost. I, I want to tell you something. If you can vote for morality, praise the Lord if it works. If you can get enough people to be a majority, by the way, it's a majority in our country today that believes that abortion is murder. And uh, it's, it's actually a majority. And that, that to me is amazing as we're becoming less moral that one of the greatest crimes against humanity is finally being understood to be immoral. But, to, you know, if a majority can vote for truth, praise the Lord for it. means you've got a society that fears God uh, at least more than half if it's a 50% vote. But Christian, don't expect the world to understand spiritual truth. And I'll go a step further. Don't expect Christians who are carnal to understand spiritual truth. Don't expect to have things in common with them and have them want what you want and understand you. They're always going to contradict you. I want to tell you something. I get attacked more by unbelievers, I mean by Christians who don't believe the Word of God or who don't hold to it than I do by unbelievers. Unbelievers don't have a hard time understanding why I'd want to live for Jesus. But believers do many times. And they'll criticize you and they'll attack your standards and they'll attack what you live for and they'll say, well, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that, even though you found it in the Bible more than anything else. And uh, you know why? Because they don't have ears to hear. Well, I spent the time talking about that. Let's look at four categories of individuals. Jesus said in verse 13, he, or verse 12, he says, The reason they don't want to hear is that seeing they may see and not perceive. He says, they're done in parables so that when they look at something, it just gets, they can see it, but they don't get it. Why would God do that to them? It says in hearing, they may hear and not understand. They can hear it, but they don't understand it. It says, uh, and lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And God is not going to accidentally, casually, carelessly forgive the sins of individuals who don't even care to know truth. Let me just warn you this morning, Christian, you're not going to accidentally end up in the right place. You can't just make one wrong decision that flies in the face of Bible truth after another and accidentally, man end up in the right place. You have to have ears to hear. You have to want to uh, do right. I know so many Christians that will go through life like this with regard to God and Bible truth and they hope that it'll all just work out positively and that things will just be great all of a sudden because they want to live their own way and they want to do things their own way but they want it all to work out okay. It doesn't work that way. Jesus said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But you don't want to know, you won't end up in the right place. Okay. Know ye not the parables? And how then will you know all parables? Jesus said, How are you going to understand anything? Now he's going to explain it. Thank you for explaining it. Now let me ask you a question. Are you ready to listen? Are you ready to hear? Because Jesus said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And my question this morning is, Do you want to hear? Let's look at four categories. You fit into one of them. If you're here this morning, you've got a living, breathing soul. 
Uh, you're a living, breathing person with an eternal soul. You'll fit into one of the four categories. First category, the Bible says, uh, first of all, the sower soweth the word. Well, the word is the word of God, we'll see. Uh, but these are they which are by the wayside, which is where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. The word is the truth, and the truth specifically is about Jesus. He was the word. Uh, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And it's talking about Jesus. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And him was life, and the life was the light of men. And Jesus many times referred to, is referred to as the Word. And Jesus is sown in the hearts, or sown for the hearts of individuals, so that they can know him, so that they can know the truth. And the Bible says, they, these are they by the wayside when the Word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the Word that was sown in their hearts. And literally here's what happens. The gospel is preached to individuals and it hits them. There's a gospel is preached and it gets to them. I don't mean it gets to their heart. I mean they have access to the gospel. They've gotten it. You know, uh, sometimes I'll knock on a door. It doesn't happen very often around here, but sometimes I'll knock on a door and before I can get out a word, the door is shut. Sometimes but maybe, maybe the door doesn't shut and somebody will say, I'll say, hey, I want to um, make sure that you're going to heaven. I'm not interested. And you can't get in a word edgewise. And sometimes I'll try to challenge them just to make sure they're not interested. And I'll say, why aren't you interested? Why don't you want to go to heaven? And I'm not interested. I'm not interested. And you know what I believe? I believe that the word is sown for that person. I don't believe that God will hold me guilty for a person that refuses to hear the gospel. He's not going to say, Pastor, you should have kicked the door in, held them down, and uh, crammed it, you know, stuffed it down their throat or done something, you know, force-feeding the gospel to them. No, the fact is, is that Satan took the word which was sown and he pulled it out of their heart, if you will. Well, if Satan did it, are they, aren't they innocent? No, my friend, the fact is they didn't have ears to hear and it was able to be taken away by Satan. In other words, if they want to hear, they'd have heard and, you can, and Satan can't take away something you hear. But the first category of individuals are those not interested. Now, I want to warn you today, Christian, of being a person whom Satan can snatch truth away. I believe it goes further than that, though. Maybe they'll have something that has the Bible truth in it. Maybe somebody will tell them about Jesus and tell them how to be saved. And they'll say, okay, uh, you know what? I'll just file that away. And I'm not going to do anything with it right now. I'm not going to receive Jesus uh, for whatever reason. There's all kinds of reasons why somebody wouldn't receive Jesus, but it all comes back to one thing. They want to worship themselves instead of God. And that's what it comes right down to. They don't want to have to bow their knee to God. They don't want to have to admit that they need salvation, eternal life. And you say, Pastor, but I know people, they just don't, they think they're too bad to be saved. I'm telling you, anyone who wants to get saved does. And that's a fact. Anyone who wants to save, God saves. And they can say what their excuse is, but the bottom line is they'd rather worship themselves than God. And so that's what it comes down to. I want to warn you this morning, Christian. I want to tell you something. You don't get to heaven by accident. You don't get to heaven by going to church. You don't get to heaven by being a good person. You don't get to heaven uh, by uh, keeping the law. You get to heaven by Jesus Christ, and He is the Word. And when the Word is sown, if you don't receive Jesus, you haven't heard, and you fit into that first category. Now, I'm going to assume this morning that there would not be many individuals here uh, that would uh, be uh, perhaps... Uh, unsure of their salvation. In other words, there wouldn't be many people here, I don't think, that wouldn't know whether they're saved. But in case there are, let me say it to you, in order to receive the Word of God, it's not something that happens casually. It's not something that happens, you know, gradually. It's something that happens instantly when you pray and say, God, I realize that I'm a sinner, that there's nothing good that I can do that will allow me to go to heaven, but God, I'm asking you to save me because of Jesus. What He did when He was the perfect Son of God, and He died on the cross for my sins, and the Bible promises that if we ask, God will give us Jesus' righteousness and take our sin and He's placed it on Jesus and we'll be given the gift of eternal life. And all you have to do to be a hearer of the Word, my friend, is to say, God, I want to be saved because of what Jesus did when He died on the cross, was buried and rose again. That's just, it's, I like the way this track puts it. Uh, it it's, it's very succinct, very simple. It says, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me for my sin and take me to heaven when I die. I believe that you died and rose again. I'm trusting you completely. Nothing I can do. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You just, if you just want God to save you and, you and you just pray that prayer from your heart, I'm just telling you something. 
God will just save you. Period. It's just that simple. But there are those individuals that hear it and they say,